So there are a lot of people out there that think life isn't fair, have a victim mentality, and think, for example, that, you know, just things just don't work out for me no matter what I do. And what I learned is that sometimes that really is the case. Some people just do experiments just like it just bad hand overall in life. But what I learned is also when it comes to money itself, money itself is just a method of exchange. So if you have a skill and you exchange it for something else, you will get paid. But that's also concurrent, for example, on where you grew up. If you grew up in America, you have more opportunities. If you grew up somewhere else, you might not have as many opportunities, but there are still people in those same areas that do elevate and do accomplish a lot more than the average person does. Because a victim mentality is one big thing you want to avoid no matter what. Now, when it comes to money guys i realized that it's a lot like farming okay you basically prepare the soil you plant your seed you water it you protect it you wait you wait you wait and then eventually it grows you keep protecting it and then eventually you get to harvest whatever this plant actually gives you but a lot of people that basically tend to just for example prepare the ground they never plant anything. Or they basically plant, they stop watering. They keep watering, but then they sell it before any fruits come out, all right? So it's just like a terrible thing overall. So in this video right here, I'm gonna talk about, for example, a poor mentality versus a wealthy mentality. And by the way, when I say wealthy, when I mean a rich mindset, I don't mean you need to have millions or billions of dollars. I just mean, for example, you have enough money, so money is not the main problem in your life, all right? And that's a good thing trust me when i say it now the very first thing guys as always is smash the like button it helps a lot with the channel on top of that subscribe to the channel hit the bell to get notified because that's free and you get updated with new videos every single day that i basically post but the very first one that i want to talk about here when it comes to mentality is fear of missing out aka fomo now, for some reason, life has always given me, for example, a lot of examples, good and bad. And sometimes I've been the bad person and sometimes I've been the good person. And in this case, I'm the good person, all right? So I remember not too long ago, I, I met a friend about five years ago. And we were both on this path to basically accomplish wealth, to just get money, right? And I remember I was a very boring guy, very risk averse. And I basically said, you know, I have my business here. I don't have that much time. You have a job. You have more time. And it was like, I wanted to know exactly what his plan was. I told him my plan is basically just go ahead and invest into boring companies. All right. I'm going to be doing index fund investing, sending money every so month, letting that money grow over time. And he told me, Tommy, you're going to get like 12% maybe 10%. That's not enough. You need more money. You need to get there faster. And there are so many opportunities out there, you know, and this is where FOMO comes in. There's this fear of missing out. You hear all these stories about people becoming millionaires overnight with Bitcoin, people doing Forex trading, people basically investing into IPO initial public offerings like Snapchat when it first came out or Uber when it first came out. And you hear all these insane stories about people just making money like crazy. And I told them, I'm just, not interested i rather just take things slow i'd rather know exactly what i'm getting myself into and i'd rather just take my time and five years later we had a conversation we talked again and i confronted him i was like hey bro you've been doing the same thing for like five years now you keep putting your money into all these dumb ideas not like that okay but in a nicer way but saying you keep putting your money into all these risky things that force you to have to keep restarting the little money you have you have a job, so your time is basically money for real. And every time you keep doing this thing, you keep basically just wasting your time, having to basically lose your money, having to restart over and over again. And you've met me from the very beginning and you saw that all I've been doing is basically just investing into boring things and letting that money basically grow over time. It might not be millions of dollars, but it's consistent and it keeps growing and growing and growing. And then I give him like a whole format plan. I was like, hey, if you do this, you can get this, which is exactly what you want. You don't want to worry about money? Well, why don't you basically limit your expenses, eliminate your debts, save for emergencies, invest like a boring person, you know, figure out exactly how to uh, pay off your home as fast as possible. By the way, he doesn't have a home yet, but he did switch states to save money, which is very smart. And he's saving a lot of money and he saves money every single month, but all the money he saves, he's spending it on trash ideas. And I told him about it and he said, Tommy, this makes sense. 
because sometimes things take a long time to click. And like I told you guys before, sometimes I've been on the other side of this story and it takes me a long time to make things click. But once it clicks, it clicks. And that's a big difference. Now, number two, guys, is going to be keeping up with broke people. AKA keeping up with the Joneses. I don't know exactly, well, I do know, okay? We are creatures and we're jealous and envious. It's just bad overall. But overall, you know, you see somebody with something and you kind of want it. And you know, when you're a kid, it's just kind of like a little like frivolous and not really that crazy because your friend has a toy, you want to buy one. Your friend has a Nintendo, you want the Nintendo or uh, a PlayStation or an Xbox or whatever. And you know, you, you usually get it. But when you become an adult, you end up falling into big traps just because you want to be like other people. You know, your friend went to college. You don't want to be the only loser who doesn't go to college. Now you're stuck in $38,000 worth of debt and you don't even use a degree. All right. Your friend bought a house. So now you want to buy a house too. Now you're stuck with a 30 year mortgage. Your friend got a fancy car, but you can't afford one. So you got a lease and now you're stuck with a $500 payment per month. You know, or you get a loan on a car. You know, my main thing is when you try to keep up with broke people, you usually end up even broker because it's not really what you want to do. And what I realized is when it comes to wealthy people, they basically do everything against the grain. They buy used vehicles, they buy homes that are affordable, and they basically just don't go ahead and basically try to copy everybody else. They just basically try to just be frugal overall. Now, that's what I've learned. So if you find yourself in a in a game of i monkey see monkey do my friend has this and i want this too you know you really want to avoid that and when i was in college what i did to get over this mindset was i said i make eight dollars an hour whenever i buy a pair of shoes for a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars i'm literally spending 10 hours or 20 hours of my time on this thing just to look cool or whatever and the people that i'm trying to impress they're not really people that care about me. And eventually, I probably won't care about them either, right? Because that's not the type of friend you actually want. So just keep those things in mind. And eventually what I did was I sold everything of value that I had to actually buy things of real value, like assets in the stock market and so on, and savings. And that makes a better difference overall. Now, number three, guys, is going to be getting into debt to get rich. Poor people, they're always in a rush. And it's this poor mindset, all right? And by the way, when I say poor people, I don't mean, for example, people that basically are living in poverty per se, but I'm saying like poor people in the sense of like a poor mindset that they wanna be wealthy, but they're also in a rush and they take massive risks, whether it's, for example, I wanna gamble, I wanna buy lottery tickets, I just wanna do something quick to make some money. And then I realized a long time ago, oh, I wanna use debt to leverage and try to make as much money. And they always hear about, for example, somebody on Instagram that basically, put down 20% or no down payment and bought something and then they have a bunch of stuff now, but they don't realize these people are selling them, for example, courses, selling them products, selling them advice, selling them software, selling them books and merchandise. And that's where their real money comes from, okay? So you wanna be very careful with this stuff, okay? Because whenever you do that stuff, you do run the risk of losing the little you actually have. And I don't think any investment is worth basically um, risking everything you have. It's very stupid um, and I don't recommend it. But you know, what I learned is when I used to take on a lot of debt, I realized that what's my rush for? The average millionaire is in their 50s, in their 50s. So if you're in your 20s right now, you have 30 more years. You're in your 40s, you have 10 more years, right? Maybe 20 more years because you, you know you have the, the, the 40s and you have also some of the 50s, it's like 20 years, like you have time to accomplish your goals. So why take on all this illegitimate risk for no reason? And lastly, lastly, it's only three, but I'll give you this third one is, a lot of people have victim mentality. Um, yes, people do get dealt very bad hands, but one thing that's helped me out the most is always looking at people that have been dealt the worst hands and see exactly how they basically overcame all those things. Because whatever man can do, man can usually do all right and it's not really that impressive when you actually think about it okay because if somebody does this and you do it too um you probably can get the same result but don't expect to get it at the same exact time and don't expect to get exactly what they have either you know the whole thing is if you really want not to worry about money figure out your blueprint to actually get there and just kind of like um execute but don't assume that your version of that blueprint looks exactly like somebody else's you know because my version of not worrying about money is having God be the priority in my life, having a, a wife and a family, taking care of my family, 
and not having to worry about, for example, the daily um, stresses of like having to live paycheck to paycheck. That's my version of success. But for some people, it might be, for example, I want to make millions of dollars and I want to have a, a, a big car that runs fancy and goes room to room. And that stuff is cool stuff, right? But you really have to ask yourself, are you willing to pay that price for all the work you have to do to actually accomplish those things? Keep that in mind. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Shout out to God. He's awesome. And on top here is another video. Over here is my face. Subscribe. And as always, Long Dream Team, officially out.